Hi everyone, I'm Bruce Schwartz, and thanks for the interest. Thanks especially for commenting, the contributions, the support, the shares. It's all because of you guys and my work, all of us together. This is how we're going to get the word out to other people that, you know, the moon is inhabited. That's what I believe. There's so much activity up there. Nothing leads us away from this. Everything leads us towards the truth, meaning they're structuring colors, activity, UFOs. We're seeing lights. I'm starting to wonder now if it's not storms that I'm picking up. The moon does have an atmosphere, so long the uh, more elevated and, well, first of all, the first place that I've ever heard this was John Lear. And John Lear, the retired CIA agent, said it himself. He believes the moon has a more elevated atmosphere than we were told. And everything leads me to this. It's not something I'm trying to make up. It's actually, I was overwhelmed when I went up the first time and saw the truth for myself. 90 degree angles. Check this out. These are pipes, whether it's people or beings going through them or liquids. It's something. Air, electricity, wires covered with insulation. I don't know. But it seems that the moon is <laughs> really not a natural satellite. I don't think it's a natural satellite. All the colors that we're seeing, you know, clouds. I see a lot of hazes, smokes, and clouds running off on the surface. And it, you know, atmosphere. It has to be. What else can it be? People say, well, there's a disturbance between Earth and the moon all the time. We see an atmosphere disturbance. Well, there's none tonight, and we can't see much, and uh, much um, oscillation. Why does it oscillate at times more? You know, it's said, I, I learned at the beginning that it was supposed to be the heat, heat waves, meaning if it's hot here in Quebec or anywhere, I, I assume, very, very hot day, we're going to see some smog in the air. It could be, but, you know, what's the limit uh, with a telescope, like a 14-inch telescope? Can't we cut through that? You'd think we could if we're looking at structuring this close to the surface, objects and anomalies. Merificunditatis looks like a tower there. Right here, this object often talked about two very symmetrical straight lines that come down or, you know, is it the optical illusion? Is this object standing up? This is the real surface, so when you're looking at this, there's no two ways about it. Take the time to analyze it. Common sense, that's all it is. And you can see that these jumble up objects that, yes, probably could, some of them could be natural. Honestly, I don't think one of them are natural. Not one of them. They're all builds. That, that's what I believe. But, you know, I'm not here to try to prove to the world that each object on the moon is a structure. I'm trying to prove to people that I've found at least one structure. And the fact that one structure can be up there on the surface of the moon, well, just like I said, common sense. We're not alone. We are not alone out there. It makes perfect sense when you look at the topography of the moon and how the lunar surface is made. It just makes perfect sense. So long me. It's there. We can see it. It's inhabited. It's all linked together like a grid everything linked to each other different levels and the closer we get in the more we see that hey ejecta can't float we see little bridges and pathways and why do i say a bridge is because it's a connection a white cloud-like straight symmetrical object that goes from crater to crater and it's thousands of feet in the air what are these things joining each other at thousands of feet in the air common sense it's constructed they're constructed objects whether they're ancient or recent again that's besides the point and besides why i'm here no matter what the quantity of subscribers are going to be here it's not going to stop me from trying to post good quality footage because each person that comes here deserves to see some raw truth and that's what i'm doing it's not easy to zoom into these areas and of course when you do, I mean, I'm not God, right? And I don't have his capabilities. And when I zoom up into an area and people see a blur, they go, oh, it's blurry. 
guys, stop jumping the gun like we're a bunch of kids. Clouds are blurs. If there's a cloud or haze on the surface, it's going to be in everyone's research to see this blurry surface. We even see in the comments people saying themselves, what's the coincidence about people trying to show um, the Sasquatch or the surface of the moon UFOs? We're always seeing them blurry. It's fake. No, it actually makes sense that somebody's going all out with the device that they have to try to get this object and to try to show the truth. And they're going to the extremes of the device, like I'm doing with the cameras, to try to get in there so close, even if there is a little blur or a haze. We can't make clouds disappear, guys. So, the more that share this work, the more that uh, people that help me, like this amazing community that we have here now, almost 23,000 people here, we have to get um, to as many different countries as possible uh, as many different um, areas that people are not as informed about UFOs. So by sharing on social media, some of you can't even imagine how it really more than helps a channel get out there. It's one link sometimes in one area on social media that you can leave it there. It's, it depends on the traffic flow, right? And it's not about spreading links and plastering them everywhere. I mean, nobody likes having links plastered. but And it's hard, right? It's hard for me to communicate with other channels. We're all sort of skeptical and we're all sort of afraid when other astronomy channels come around each other. And it's like, what do they want? Are they going to take my work? Are they, they going to take my ideas? And why am I talking about this? It's because I really want to take the time to explain to other channels who really don't know me and maybe do not want to know me or don't trust me or whatever that my intentions being here on YouTube are to show what I found. And I didn't really know that there were that many people doing the same thing I'm doing. I'm going to be very honest with you. And if it's affected some of you that I'm doing this, the work is unorthodox or different to as the way you're doing it, just please respect the way I'm doing things. And I'm not here to take away any of your uh, people subs or whatever and I don't think it's you know how can it be if you're doing something legitimate and justified how could the people around you leave you so don't worry about it if you're doing something for humanity some some truth even if you're doing it a little different as long as your intentions are good like mine are trying to help people see the truth out there I'm not aiming for religious groups I'm not aiming for anyone well I'm sort of aiming for religious groups to come see my work, yes, because I think everyone's welcome, you know, to see what's out there. And I get so many religious people here. And when I do, I love it because some of you guys are really, really um, strong-willed and will just tell me, I love seeing that this other life out there, Bruce, and but it doesn't change my belief system and it doesn't change who I believe in is God. So just wanted to say you know hats off to those who are respectfully into their religions and stuff and don't think that i'm going to laugh at you guys or put you down and people don't know if i'm religious or not you guys just don't know me it's not about religion for me i hate terms i'm sorry i'm very spiritual that's a term that i like to use whether you call me a witch or a warlock i don't care um my intentions are good and my intentions aren't to be powerful but my intentions are to understand the powers that are out there you know, the mystical things, the mysteries, things unknown that people don't dare venture into. And I find, I find it funny that just is it coincidence or not that our governments are stopping us from uh, looking into these areas and, you know, they're not talking about these areas or we get disinformation about these areas. It just, it's out there. We have access to all the information now but the thing is all the good and bad information is all piled up together and you have to root and sort through that and you have to use your common sense and judgment and um, you know emotions and heart and soul to find out if someone's a real person I just wanted to reach out to some of you you know say a little bit about myself I never do this in the videos I always talk about the moon and only the moon but guys I want you you to know I appreciate you for stopping by and for sharing my work.